Welcome to my finally finished studio. In the last video, we talked about how I got the audio in this horrific echo inducing room to sound good. In this video, we're going to be talking about the way things look. My goal for this room was to be able to sit down and without ever messing with the cameras at all, I could just flip on the lights, everything would work, it would look perfect no matter if it was daytime or nighttime. And then when it was time to transfer these files, I could get them over to the computer without fiddling with memory cards. I think I have figured it out. Let me show you what I've done. First of all, let's talk about the cameras we're using. I am shooting on two Sony a7S III's and honestly, these cameras cost way too much and have way too many incredible features to be locked down on tripods shooting at 24 frames a second for the rest of their lives. I also purchased the Sony a7 IV. I have a couple of these right now and I was hoping to use these in studio just because they're a thousand bucks cheaper. But the way that these cameras connect and tether wirelessly, is different and it doesn't work as well for my current setup because I am currently controlling these cameras with two iPads that I have right off of uh, my shot here. Now the software I use on the iPad is called Monitor Plus. It's way better than Sony's imaging something software. I think I spent a few dollars to upgrade this to the pro version. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. This software works every single time. It connects instantly automatically and gives me almost total control over the camera. As you can see along the top, I can change my shutter speed, my aperture, my ISO, my white balance. I can change my autofocus as well. So sometimes if I know I'm gonna be moving around or holding things in front of my face, I'll change the autofocus to manual focus like it is now. Or I can go back to autofocus and let's say I wanted to focus on something like my hand, I can just touch on the iPad screen and it's just gonna follow my hand or whatever I happen to be uh, tracking and then I can click on cancel tracking and it's gonna come back over to my face. So as you can tell, basically the software just makes controlling your camera wirelessly really easy. Now I leave these cameras on all the time. They're not recording all the time, but they're on all the time and I can easily turn on my iPad and just start recording without ever going over there. Now what I could do is just have a battery inside and plug the USB-C cable that could power and charge the camera uh, through that one cable. However, I am using the USB-C port to transfer data and I'll show you that in just one second and we'll go into more detail in another video. So instead, I went to Amazon, I purchased a dummy battery kit for both of these cameras and I have those plugged into a battery that's on the floor because the power's constantly going in and out here in Puerto Rico. So these cameras are running 24 seven, they're always ready to record. Now when I'm done recording, I simply hit stop recording on each one of these iPads. I can walk to the corner of the room to my desk and there are two USB-C cables that I have running along this entire wall here and I simply plug each of those in to whatever computer I'm currently working on and boom like that, both of my cameras are connected and able to transfer the files over that wire without ever touching the camera, without ever removing memory cards. I can't stand when you pull the memory card out and the camera shifts a little bit and then it wrecks your whole frame. So I was able to accomplish my goal. I can control the camera. I can start and stop recording. I can power the camera. I can transfer the files all without ever touching either of these cameras. Now on my A camera here, I have a very fancy teleprompter by GVM. I almost never use a teleprompter and I wanted this for a very specific reason and right out of the box, it can't do exactly what I want it to do and therefore I'm going to make another video about this in the future. I have a few hacks I'm going to try to do with this thing to either use it as a teleprompter or use it as some sort of monitoring device or use it for telecommunication or live streaming. Again, I'll make another video about that in the future. All right, now let's talk about lenses. Now Tamron has been a sponsor in the past and they sent me these lenses a long time ago and when I compared these Tamron lenses to the Nikon or Sony equivalent, the image quality was so freaking similar, but the price was like 40% of the price of the you know name brand lens. So each of the lenses that I'm using on the three cameras are all Tamron lenses and they have been fantastic for me. This one on the A camera here is the 28 to 75 2.8. I have it zoomed to approximately 50 millimeters for this frame here. This camera here has the 70 to 180 millimeter 2.8 lens. I have it all the way zoomed out to 70 millimeters. 
to get a tight shot from another angle here. And then on my third camera, this is a Sony a7 IV. I'm shooting with the 17 to 28 millimeter 2.8 lens by Tamron. And I use this camera occasionally to shoot tabletop stuff straight down. I have my microphone above me and then I also have another boom stand here and I can just attach this camera right above the table to get tabletop shots. It's pretty rare that I shoot top down, so I don't have an AC adapter for this and I'm not running the cable. For this camera, I set it up when I need it and I do have to remove the memory card when I transfer the files. Okay, now let's talk about lighting. I wanted to create a completely automatic lighting system that I could just flick on and that would work during the day or at night and I wouldn't have to fiddle with the lights or the camera settings, it would just work. Right now I'm being lit 100% with natural light and it looks okay during the day, but of course it doesn't work at all at night and I think we can make it look a little bit better during the day as well. In front of me here, I have two GVM lights. This is the SD3000D and this is the 2000D. This is a 200 watt light and a 300 watt light. The two lights look identical, but of course the power bricks give it away. This light is 300 watts and gives you approximately 50% or one half of a stop more light. Now, obviously I wouldn't need all of this power if I was going to black out all of the windows here, but I wanna be able to use this with the natural sunlight outside. Check out how bright this light is. It's crazy. I'm just bouncing it off of my white curtains over here huge difference. So I've got giant natural light coming from this window over here. I want to accentuate that. I'm going to simply put this light on a light stand without any modifier other than the reflector dish. And I'm just going to bounce it into this white curtain that I have over here. It's just going to add a little bit more light during the day. And then of course at night, it's going to give us all of our key light. Now I also need to spice up the background. I've got this empty white wall behind me right here. I've got this cove in the back with the guitar back there. So for this light, I'm going to put it up high in the corner right out of frame here. And I'm going to fire it towards this light that I have in the background right here. I'm hoping the light can cast a shadow down the wall. And then I've got this black case back here with a bunch of stuff in the case. I want the light to be hitting that as well. Finally, I'm setting up a GVM box light in that cove in the back. It's just going to be firing directly at that guitar to give it a little bit of punch. Now, each of the lights I have plugged into a smart plug that is HomeKit compatible, and I can attach that to my home app on my smartphone here. And then I can turn each one on just by touching on my phone. First of all, I'll turn on the lamp that's behind me here. That just adds a little bit of interest to that corner. I can turn on my main light here, which is going to be bouncing off of this white curtain over here. And keep in mind that I have my camera set to auto ISO. So no matter how bright or dark I set these lights, my camera's going to create a perfect exposure each time. That's how this works really well during the day and night without having to touch it. Let's turn on this light over here, which is gonna be cascading down the wall and hitting this thing in the back. As you can tell, it's not doing much during the day, but it's very significant at night. And then check out the guitar in the back. And this is what the same room looks like at night with the same lighting and the same camera settings. Let's talk a little bit about color. Each one of the lights that I'm using has the ability to color shift. Now for my main light here, which is bouncing off of this white window that I have over here, I wanted it to match the color temperature of that natural light coming in. So I set it to around 5,000 Kelvin. But for the other lights in the background, I wanted them to match the much warmer light that you can see in that lamp back there. So I made them much warmer looking. Again, it's not going to look very significant during the day, but it is pretty significant at night when there's no natural light, as you can see. And I think it just works to separate me from the background. Well, that wraps up this video. Make sure you subscribe because I have one more in this series. In the next video, I'm going to take you through my entire workflow when it comes to transferring files, editing, saving, and then backing up and accessing those files later. Stay tuned for that. And of course, if you're looking to take your photography or videography to the next level, make sure to head over to fstoppers.com. We have daily free content. And if you're looking to become a professional photographer or videographer, check out our full-length professional tutorials at fstoppers.com store.